You know, a lot of people ask me, Hey, Adam, why do you do this show sitting behind a desk? Wouldn't you be more comfortable doing it at your computer like other internet talky face blabberfucks? What's with the whole suit and desk thing, huh? Then they usually start picking lint off my sleeve or criticizing the condition of my shoes for some reason. I'm not sure why. But, well, simply put, I do it this way because I like it. I grew up on Johnny Carson, Dave Letterman, and, and I've always been kind of secretly envious of their jobs. I've always wanted to do that for a living. And, well, that and this is my fucking show, dickhead. Stop touching my suit and your fucking shoes aren't exactly ru ruby slippers either, okay? Here's your damn ranch show, folks. Live from Santa Valley, it's that damn ranch show with E. Adam Thomas. Tonight, Adam doesn't welcome from the classic series Star Trek, William Shatner. That is because we're a dumb internet show and celebrities avoid us like the plague, as well they should. And now, a man who deeply resents everyone for everything, E. Adam Thomas! Greetings, I am E. Adam Thomas, as that very erudite man just said, and this is That Damn Rand Show, the digital equivalent to a cat that won't stay off the fucking kitchen counter. Tonight, we'll be looking at that mysterious enigma known as the Late Night Talk Show. You know, that shit your parents watch after the news and before they fall asleep as an alternative to bitterly weeping into their pillow every night? After realizing they brought a child into this diabolical cesspool of a planet? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. Anyway, it all started in 1954 when NBC brought Steve Allen's local late night show that he was doing in New York out to a national audience. Allen was an affable and, for the time, unpredictable comedic talent with a sharp wit. Audiences today may consider him to be kind of dry and safe, but for his time, he was actually a little bit subversive. Then again, this was so early on in television history that there was no status quo to speak of, so the rules were still being written through trial and error. And boy, in those days, there was a lot of fucking error. The budgets for TV productions were mind-numbingly low. There was no such thing as videotape, so virtually all programs were actually shot and broadcast live. This is unfortunately also why we don't have a wealth of footage from that time, because the only way to preserve a program for rebroadcast was through kinescope, which, to be honest, was aiming a movie camera at a TV screen for all intents and purposes. Those of you addicted to the clarity of HD can probably guess how interested most folks are these days in watching something preserved in that manner. But because I'm an asshole, I'm going to make you watch this anyway. In case you're just joining us, this is tonight. And uh, I can't think of too much to tell you about it, except I want to give you the bad news first. This program is going to go on forever. <laughs> Boy, you think you're tired now. <laughs> See? That looked like shit, but it was also still funny. It was still amusing. That's why folks who refuse to watch classic Doctor Who episodes on the reasoning that they're old and in black and white are what we here at TDRS refer to as spoiled asshats. Anyway, enough with the Jurassic history lesson. After Alan left, NBC brought in Jack Parr. Now, he was a good host for the most part, funny, likable, not a complete fucking douchebag, which is important. Parr's only real issue was that he was a bit of a drama queen. He walked off his show for three weeks in a huff once because NBC cut a joke out of his mon monologue. It was a harmless little joke about a water closet, which is a British term for toilet, and, and it, it, was, it went something like this. An English lady, while visiting Switzerland, was looking for... Fuck you all! As I was saying before I was interrupted, Parr was a bit oversensitive. Ha! Shut up. And although he was popular with audiences, his emotional nature made it easy for NBC to let him off The Tonight Show in 1962. Enter Johnny Carson. Silly 
kid. He's just really a silly kid. I really love you. I really love you. Well, you know, you keep I saying... I mean, I really love you. Know you know what I mean? Really? Really, there's... Uh, I don't fall in love with guys. This. You know what I mean? I'm pretty tough myself. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, a beauty comes along. And... Carson was a powerhouse for the genre. Equal parts funny, brilliant, and humble, with a touch of innuendo and a genuine warmth that just felt right. He became something of an icon. He was called the king of late night. Carson soon held a power virtually unprecedented in television history, only comparable at the time to Ed Sullivan. For 30 years, Carson held court over the bedtime habits of America, boosting the careers of struggling new comics, lampooning hot button issues and the politics of Washington, and just generally being the kind of guy you kind of want to hang out with for an hour every night. It was during Johnny's tenure that David Letterman was given his own show right after Carson called Late Night. Letterman became a hot ratings ticket himself with younger viewers, and it was felt he would be a shoe-in for Carson's replacement, if and when Johnny ever decided to leave, that is. Finally, in 1992, Johnny Carson retired from The Tonight Show, and sure enough, he was replaced by this unfunny turd. We have Paul Schaefer and The Tonight Show Band. What do you see this uh, group here? It kind of looks like one of those 60 softball games or the cops versus the hippies, you know? Basically what happened is that he had had a tenacious shrew, that Leno had had a tenacious shrew for a manager who swept in and convinced NBC that they had to hire Leno or else. Or else what? Uh, fuck if I know. All I know is Johnny wanted Dave, Dave wanted tonight, Jay wanted tonight, and NBC apparently wanted a fucking lobotomy. Just how pissed off are you? Man. I've never asked that question in many years. Here. Johnny, let me, let me give you a little piece of advice. You, you keep using language like that. <laughs> And you're going to find yourself out of a job. <laughs> Unfortunately, Americans are lazy fucktars, and L Leno still managed to edge Letterman just a bit, who moved over to CBS out of the top spot, although they were usually closer in the ratings than NBC is comfortable with admitting. Leno must have been slipping, though, because in 2007, they started grooming Conan O'Brien to take over. Conan had been hosting Late Night for 17 years. They weren't willing to totally let go of Leno, though, so they gave him an unprecedented nightly slot in the prime time area, 10 p.m. Eastern, where Leno thoroughly screwed the pooch. No, 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 I'm sorry, he didn't just screw the pooch, he grudge-fucked it with a broken beer bottle. His ratings were so low, Tom Green started thinking he had another shot at a show. Leno's ratings were murdering the local news shows, whose ratings in turn started blasting Conan's on Tonight. Letterman, despite killing it in the ratings for CBS, actually felt bad for Conan O'Brien. After less than a fucking year, which was about a quarter of the amount of time NBC gave Carson to start winning, Leno kicked Conan off the show and took over again as Tonight Show's host. In an unusual move, Conan started a whole new show on basic cable station TBS. And it's still going on to this day, And even though it's not a major win ratings winner. In the meantime, Letterman gave his Late Late Show, the program following his CBS Late Show, to Scottish comedian Craig Ferguson. You have to say it like that, it's law. Who promptly became one of the greatest hosts of any of these shows you could ever fucking have. He spoke off the cuff, he had outrageous bits, a gay robot skeleton sidekick, and he treated his hobos, uh, not his, his audience, like thinking beings who didn't need crappy movie promos shoved in their faces. <sighs> Times change, people get old, Dave and Craig both got tired for their own reasons, and as if that wasn't enough, once Leno did finally jump ship, they gave tonight to Jimmy Fallon. They gave Late Night to Seth Meyers, who is by far the best we have right now. And then CBS gave Craig and Dave's shows to Stephen Colbert and James Corden. Now, Colbert's doing okay. I can tolerate him, and he's funnier 
than either Kimmel or Fallon, for the most part. But James Corden? I'm sorry. I, I can see him hosting an afternoon game show, maybe. But for the late night spot, he's just dull. And that karaoke in cars thing is just irritating. None of them now have the kind of chops that Letterman or Carson had. Like I said, the only one that comes close is Seth Meyers, and even he still looks more like the kind of guy that would make fun of you at a, in fun of your swim trunks in a diving class. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but that perma, perma smile on his face does get a little cloying at times. Back in the day, we had a king of late night, and it wasn't because he didn't have any competition. Everyone from Chevy Chase to Joan Rivers to Dennis Miller and Arsenio Hall went up against him, and yet he never faltered, and he never sweat the competition. So, what's the big answer? The big answer is... Oh, sorry. The big answer is that we are not necessarily suffering from a lack of talent. The fact is, when Johnny left The Tonight Show, we didn't have big dollars in cable, streaming services, internet, and so forth, and there was less emphasis on breaking the mold. We liked the mold. We were comfort comfortable with the mold. But that was 1992. It's 2016 now. It's been 24 years. Mold is now growing all over the mold. It's time to throw it away and make a new one. So how do we do that? Well. For one thing, it's time to leave some of these puritanical bleeping bullshit behind. They're not bothering with bleeping the word shit on Conan O'Brien and The Daily Show, so stop trying to be all Sesame Street at 11.30 at night with, with Colbert and, and Fallon and everybody. If we're up past our bedtime anyway, then what's the harm in dropping an F-bomb every now and then? Tackle some bigger subjects. Stop being so goddamn politically correct. And for you viewers who are offended by shit like that, you can get old episodes of Johnny's Tonight Show on DVD or you can even see some of them here on YouTube. Stop forcing the rest of us to watch mundane drivel just because you end up with an extra grape pew every time somebody says, fuck Nancy Grace, that cunt is a cocksucking cum dumpster. <clears throat> I just made somebody's hair. It's completely white, actually. That's just an example, of course. I, I, I seriously doubt anyone would actually say that about her specifically. On the air, anyway. If, if anything I have said today offended you or upset you in some way, good. At least you're thinking. If you agree with everything I said, awesome. It means you're really intelligent. Either way, let me know by commenting on this video, looking up that damn ranch show on Facebook, emailing me at boratom at gmail.com, finding me on Twitter, whatever shaves your balls. I don't really don't care. Anything will work. I really want to hear, hear from you, especially if I pissed you off. Have a good night. hi -o. Angry Men Reviews. Many fucks said, no fucks given. That was some wild, wacky stuff. Just wild, wacky, wacky stuff. And Ed's passed out again. Oh, well.